Hi, I'm a bibliophile, and if you don't know what that means, go read a book. This is Sensor Sensibility, where we talk about books. Bad books. You know, books that mothers tell their kids. No child of mine is ever going to read. No, 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 no. Yeah, those books. And today we're going to be talking about this book, Hoodoo by Ronald L. Smith. And if you don't know what this book's about... Okay, so the book is about this boy named Hoodoo, and Hoodoo has magical powers, right? Only he can't use them. And he was born with this Hoodoo mark in the shape of a heart on his face, and his mom died when he was born because she didn't eat enough white clay or something like that. Anyway, so he's raised by his grandma Francis, and his dad died. Okay, so the first thing that happens is he goes into this candy store, right? And in the candy store, he meets that... <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, he meets the... And he goes home, and he starts having all these dreams, like right? these nightmares. And in the dreams, he's the... Hold his hand, I need to find the dead man's hand. And then he, if he finds the dead man's hand, he's going to take over the whole town. And what's going to happen is, after he takes over the whole town, he's going to turn them into... And then they're all the... And then there's going to be a bunch of And then... They're all going to have an epic battle! And all this... Oh, come on! So why do censors hate this book so much? Ahem. <clears throat> Racial themes, alternative lifestyles, profanity, gee, what the heck's that? Sex, violence, neg negativity, witchcraft, unpopular religious views, unpopular political views, any theme judged unsuitable for a particular age group. Okay, let's go through the items that appear in this book. Number one, racial themes. Okay, before we go any further, we have to address the elephant in the room. Not that elephant. Hoodoo is black. Smith set his book in Alabama in the 1930s, and he said on his publisher's page that he was particularly focusing on 1933. Not a great time or place to be black. To put the book into historical perspective, on March 25th, 1931, nine black youths, who later came to be known as the Scottsboro Boys, were accused of raping two white women on a freight train from Chattanooga. Police had to protect them from mob violence that night, and eight of the nine were sentenced to death based on questionable evidence from an all-white jury. Whites lynched many black men during this time period, based on little to no evidence of the wrongdoing of the accused. Smith has Hoodoo's father face the same sort of trial when Hoodoo's father tries to help a white man, a gambler, win big by making him a mojo bag. The mojo bag doesn't work, the gambler amasses a huge amount of debt, and who does he blame? Hoodoo's father. So when he confronts him, Hoodoo's father tries to protect himself and ends up killing the man. The white community doesn't stop for a trial and instantly sentences Hoodoo's father to the gallows. So racial themes, check. Number two, alternative lifestyles. Okay, for the sake of my sanity, I think we need to explain what alternative lifestyles is. And basically what it means is any lifestyle that doesn't involve a traditional mommy, daddy, and child relationship. Okay, so the question is, is alternative lifestyles applicable to Hoodoo? And the answer is, of course! Hoodoo's father is obviously dead, and his mother died in childbirth. He lives with his grandmother, whom he calls Mama Francis, and she's separated from her husband just because she didn't like him and they didn't get along. Hoodoo spends an inordinate amount of time out of the influence of any male figures whatsoever, and he spends most of his time around Mama Francis, his friend Bunny, who is a girl, and also Mama Francis's sister, Aunt Jelly. So I'm gonna give this a check, alternative lifestyle. Now let's skip a few and head on to number five, violence. 
Well, we've already talked about the hanging, so I won't bring that up again. But we also have Hoodoo's father killing another man in self-defense. But let's just talk about the stranger. Yeah? To rack that death toll up even higher, he kills Mama Francis, and he plagues Hoodoo with these horrible dreams about dead men's hands getting cut off. Yeah. Plus, we've got the whole issue of bullying, which Hoodoo faces in school and in his community. So I'm going to give violence a big check. Number six, negativity? Negativity? What? Okay. Luckily, Jamie Lee explains this category a little better. Her explanation is, some books are just too sad for any of us to suffer through, at least according to book challengers. Why agonize over harsh realities or, you know, fiction, when we can shift our attention to raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, and of course Prince George. Some of the violence objections do bleed over into this category. I mean, some things are just too sad, like bullying, murder, death, nightmares, racism. I think you get the idea. Negativity, check. Moving on, number eight, unpopular religious views. Oh, I am so excited about this one. Uh, this book is all about the use of hoodoo, in case you couldn't tell from the title. According to Wikipedia, hoodoo is a combination of religious practices the African slaves brought with them. During the 19th century, African Americans blended the concepts of hoodoo with Christian beliefs to make the practices more acceptable. Although hoodoo is not the same as voodoo, some of the negativity associated with voodoo and witchcraft spills over into the understanding of hoodoo. The use of herbs and incantations would lead most censors to categorize hoodoo incorrectly as witchcraft. Even if they do recognize it as a religion, it definitely falls under the unpopular category. Check! Number 9. Unpopular Political Views We've mentioned these before in earlier categories, but I'll dig a little deeper! During the 1930s, the Southern Democrats were the most prominent political party in Alabama. They believed in segregation and patriarchy two ideas that this book touches upon. Painting a sympathetic picture of blacks in the South was not popular then, and since our most recent election, it is not popular now. Similarly, depicting a strong black woman raising her grandson without the help of any man flies in the face of the conservative idea of a woman's true place in society. These political views would have been extremely unpopular in the 30s, but they aren't even popular now. Political check. Finally, number 10. Any theme that is inappropriate for certain age groups? This is the final straw argument that censors and anyone else will use to explain away something that they don't like. Well, it just isn't appropriate for young children. Of course, they never want to tell you exactly what age that is, or exactly what the inappropriate part is. I mean, if you think about it, I guess Hoodoo does fall under all these bad things. It has women living alone, racism, horror, violence, so I guess yeah, check. So we've already established that Hoodoo does have sensor issues. But the question is, do these censor issues warrant censoring the whole book? And we're going to do my checklist. Buckle up. Is it yes or no? The instances of racism in Hoodoo are similar to actual historical accounts dating from that time. People like Hoodoo experience similar issues, so censoring this book is just the same as censoring history itself, and that's malignant. Whites and white Southerners, especially, should not pretend that these atrocities never happened. Books like Hoodoo remind us that we shouldn't make judgments about people based on superficial characteristics like skin color. 
I give this a no on the list. You can't censor history. Okay, now alternative lifestyles is the most ridiculous issue in my opinion, simply because those alternative lifestyles are really only alternative because they're based on the American dream of the perfect family. Living with your grandmother or someone who's not your parent is something a lot of children can appreciate and relate to in a book like Hoodoo. So, who are you to say what's normal? I give this a no. Violence. Okay, to be perfectly honest, I think violence is a matter of perspective. In Hoodoo, there aren't really a lot of violent depictions, aside from the part where Mama Francis tells Hoodoo about how his father chopped a man's head off. But I mean, come on, there is much, much worse in that in video games today. And I think the same thing can be said about negativity, but I'll say it like this instead. Oh dear, I just don't believe in negativity. I, I don't even like to use the, the N word, you know. No! Yeah, I'm sorry. Negativity teaches you about life. No one's ever going to wake up and everything be perfect all day long, every day for the rest of their life. It just doesn't happen. Oh, wait. I remember this book. I read about this girl. la di da di da I went on an adventure, of course. I had no reason to go. And I told my parents before I went. But anyway, I went on an adventure and I battled a dra- I mean, befriended a dra- mouse. And, <clears throat> and then we went home to my wicked, wonderful stepmother, and we all had cookies and cake, one slice each, and then we went to sleep. The end. Boring. Kids need to know that some things are dangerous, and not everything is going to be the best and most funnest thing ever. Negative experiences teach children how to avoid them, but they also teach them how it would feel to have those negative experiences themselves, which also prompts them not to be a negative person in someone else's story. Plus, no problems makes for a lame story, so no on that. Unpopular religious views. Okay, the only thing I have to say about this is, it's true, and I know what to do. Burn the sinners! Burn the evil people who aren't that good! Reading this filth would convert ears and teaching my child into a fake dream! Kill them! Not that! Really? Just because your kid doesn't have the same religion, you're not going to let him read the book? <sighs> Wait a minute. Which religion is popular? Why can't all religions be depicted in schools? What happened to freedom of religion? Isn't this an outdated idea? Like from the 1500s? No to this. Unpopular political views. Wow. So many issues with popularity. I guess we know who the senses were in middle school. <laughs> Rough life. Alright, in all seriousness, just because a view is considered unpopular, like equality for everyone, doesn't mean that children can't handle it. All children are going to face bullies in their lives, or become one. And saying that kids can't handle world issues like racism, gender inequality, or religious persecution is the same as saying that children will never be exposed to them. And that is just not true. I give this a no, on the grounds that children are smarter than we give them credit for, and life is just never easy. Any theme deemed not suitable for a particular age group. Gee, that's as clear as mud. Particular age group? How do you choose? Okay, no, no, no. In Hoodoo, the themes in question are horror and graphic descriptions. And this is the only issue in the book that I will give the censors credit for. <laughs> okay, Huda goes through a lot of horrific challenges in this book, things that no child would feel comfortable being exposed to. And though he handles them admirably, I will say that the horror in this book is something that will thrill anyone who reads it. But come on! That's the point! Sure, okay, it has horror, but I go back to the video games and movies that have all of these in-in-color. 
The only danger from this book is your kid's imagination. And I say that says a lot about how good this book really is. So I give this a yes, horror included. Our current score, seven possible reasons to put this book down, and only one made it through. My advice, read Hoodoo. Thank you for watching Sensor Sensibility. I'm a bibliophile, and I suggest you tune in next time when I discuss which witch.